I am absolutely obsessed with how this turned out. I think I'll do this on pretty much every sweater for a while. <laughs> Welcome back to my knitting channel. My name is Nadine and you can find me at Your Knitting Vestie on Instagram, Ravelry and here on YouTube. On this channel you can expect to find me talking all about my knitting um, and what it's like being a knitter in a warmer climate. So today uh, in this video I'm basically just walking you through my current projects and I've got some finished objects which I'm very excited about, one of which I'm wearing. Um, and then I've got a couple whips, which are also really getting me going at the moment. Um, so it's just a bit of a, a bit of a catch up on what's been happening. Um, and you may have noticed I'm in a slightly different spot because Paul Michael is just working all the time at the moment and he's in the office. So um, I've set up shop in the kitchen here on our dining room table. <laughs> Um, and it's probably the only angle where there isn't some washing or chores of some sort in the background. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Let's start off with the ranunculus, which is of course what I'm wearing. I wore this for the first time into work today and I'm completely obsessed with it. Uh, so I only just finished it last night had it on the blocking mats with the fan going full force. Um, but luckily, since the weather has turned a bit warmer, it blocked out and dried super quickly, which is probably one of the only benefits of being a knitter in hot weather. So I was able to pick it up this morning and wear it. And I'll put up some B-roll um, showing you how I've styled it. This is what I kind of had in mind when I was making it, wearing it over the top of a dress. But it's actually great because since I did this in a fingering weight, um, you can't really see what's underneath the top. Uh, and I actually quite like that because one of my issues with the first ranunculus I made, which was actually in my least worn knits video, uh, one of the issues was that I think the gauge was a little bit too open. So I'm absolutely loving how close knit the gauge is on this or how tight the gauge is. So to take you through the modifications in this little uh, garment, the main modification is of course, as I just mentioned, I knit it in fingering weight. So this was in uh, Cascade 220 wool fingering weight in the color uh, olive oil, that's right. And I was influenced by Rebecca from the Crayabea, who said that this was one of her desert island yarns. So I had to have some. Um, and I was asking you in the last video what, what you think I should do to finish off the body. Because I had kind of uh, split for the arms and knit a bunch of the body. Well, not a bunch, a little bit of the body. <laughs> and then I was trying to figure out how to knit the rest to accommodate for a couple things being one, keeping it interesting by having some different modifications, but also to accommodate the growing bump as I'm in my, what, seventh, late, late seventh month of pregnancy. It's, it's late anyway. <laughs> um, and I got some great advice back from you on the last video, or the one before, sorry, saying, Nadine, knit for what your body will be like after the pregnancy you're not pregnant for a very long time, which is great advice <laughs> that I hadn't really considered um, because it feels like I've been pregnant for at least a thousand years and that I'll be pregnant for at least a thousand more. <laughs> um, but I took your advice and by and far, I think the most popular option, what is that? The most popular option uh, of the three that I put forward was to do one of the options which, which Casey from Young Folk Knits uh, mentioned in her uh, 10 modifications to the ranunculus video, I think it was called. And that was the idea of splitting the hem and doing an eye cord on either side and a bit of a high-low hem uh, with twisted rib 
which is which is what's called for in the pattern but having kind of more of a twisted rib section than what the pattern calls for and I was obsessed with that idea and I had to give it a go because I'd also put in already at that point a cable down the side of the body just as really a bit of extra detail to keep it interesting and because this is such a detail heavy yoke um, and then particularly with the twisted rib everywhere it just felt like a, a bit of a garment where more is more in terms of adding detail so yeah I ended up doing that option and I'm completely obsessed with how it turned out um, I can't believe it I'll, I'll show you again I'm, I'm sure I would have shown you in the b-roll but oh I love it and in terms of sorry I should sit near the mic <laughs> in terms of the length I if I was knitting for my pregnant body I would have knit it longer because gosh that bump really does um bump out <laughs> so I've kind of gone if I bring if I bring in the the dress to show you the bump it would be short if I were wearing it with just like pregnancy jeans or something do you, do you see um but with a dress or something that's a bit flowy I think I can get away with it for the rest of the pregnancy and then hopefully after baby is born and I'm um dressing in some of my normal clothes again hopefully it'll be right at the length where it'll just be past the top of my jeans and then a little bit lower at the back uh, which is kind of what I had in mind so I'm completely obsessed uh, with this modification particularly because it doesn't just have to be done on a ranunculus you could do this modification on literally any sweater project where you cast on stitches at the underarm and there are enough stitches for you to do this pattern so let me let me remember what I did um, I think I cast on some more stitches at the underarm for this pattern because it was fingering weight and I needed some more breadth across um, in the circumference of the body so I think I've got what three or four maybe even four one two three just three so I've got three um, reverse stockinette stitches on either side of a six stitch cable it's 12 stitches all together which is a little more than I usually cast on at the underarm but you could cut down on the number of reverse stockinette stitches down to even one or two um, which would take out a fair bit of the of that amount but the thing that I love and maybe I'll just put up a picture instead of standing up because I'm getting out of breath again um, but the thing I love about this detail is how the twisted cable so I I twisted the cable once and then immediately split I didn't do any further rounds after twisting the cable because I wanted it to look like it twisted and then the sides kind of flow off like that which I think is how it looks and I really love it because the three stitches that make up each leg of the cable are what then turn into the I-cord and it just I think it looks like each leg of of the cable is just kind of running off in a different direction completely obsessed um, so the way I did the I-cord was the way Stephen West does his eye cords it's probably a lot of other designers as well but that's where I learned how to do that technique and it's super easy because and you could add it to anything because you literally just add three stitches onto whatever you're making and then you just always make sure you knit the first three stitches and then slip the last three stitches with yarn in front pearl eyes I think um, and then it just turns into this eye cord piece of pie um, so yeah that's what I did and I absolutely love it I didn't really measure um, I couldn't really measure with <laughs> a very different body shape <laughs> um, to what I usually have 
in terms of where it would hit. So I just kind of eyeballed it and had to think about where it might hit and stopped there. Um, so I didn't use all of my yarn. I still have quite a bit. I have this one already wound up, tiny little bit here. And then I think I have one skein left, which is 50 grams. So I've got 100 grams left of this beautiful yarn. And I am sure that I will find a good use for that uh, in the future. So yeah, this is my second ranunculus. And I would say a resounding success. I'm all about it. <laughs> Current favorite. And I have to say as well, so the weather is warming up. It's currently, actually it's 24 degrees right now, which is pretty good. But it was a high of 28 today. And I wore this quite comfortably over the top of this linen dress. Um, yeah, with no troubles at all. I didn't have to take it off at any point. So this is um, a suspicion I had, which was that doing t-shirts in a fingering weight might be the way to go for that transition into summer. I don't know if you could wear it in the middle of summer unless you were inside, but at this point, I didn't die of dehydration when I went out for my coffee. <laughs> Um, so I think that's the way to go. Anyway, I should stop waffling on, but I absolutely love, um, that particular modif modification and this overall project, particularly given that I did the, um, calculations when I had COVID and had no idea if it was going to be right. <laughs> Very happy with it. Okay. So moving on to the next thing then. And that's probably the next finished object, uh, which is my engagement socks. Uh, I'm so pleased that these are finally done. I was genuinely concerned <laughs> that they would remain incomplete for, I don't know, the first 10 years of marriage at this point. <laughs> um, so I'm sure many of you have heard this a thousand times, so I won't go into the detail, but basically I was knitting on these socks. Um, when Michael proposed and that was where I put in the yellow stripe and then I didn't get around to doing the second sock until after we were married <laughs> and as it turns out after our honeymoon uh, which we went on last week so I've only just finished these but they've already had some good use um, and I've loved wearing them I did consider framing the engagement sock I might still to be honest um, or even just hang them somewhere as a bit of a decoration to commemorate um, that time. But anyway, um, love them, love that they're finished and it was fun knitting them on my honeymoon <laughs> given that they were my engagement socks. <laughs> and I will put up some footage at the end of this podcast from the honeymoon which I took uh, at Hamilton Island. So in terms of the actual knitting, um, if I could get around to that, this was an interesting exercise because A, I was using that self-striping yarn and I think they came out reasonably similar. They are certainly sisters, not twins. And I would put that down to perhaps variation in the pattern of the yarn, but also very much my tension. Uh, which, I mean, I'm a beginner sock knitter, so my tension is variable at the best of times. But I don't think I was assisted by the fact that I had put down one sock for so long when I wasn't knitting because I was ill, because of the pregnancy, uh, and then picked up the other sock. My tension on this sock is so much looser than this one. So my first, the first sock that I did here I was coming off of a roll of doing a whole bunch of socks. I'd been practicing. I was, I just had it down. I don't know. I was in the groove and this sock fits ironically like a glove. <laughs> um, it fits so well, tight, but not too tight. It kind of hits the heel. It's the right height on the leg. It's the right kind of tension on the leg. Stunning. Um, this is its ugly sister. 
Um, the tension is wildly inconsistent, I think. Uh, even though I counted the number of stitches in the heel flap, I definitely ended up with a longer heel flap on this one than on this one. Gosh, that looks really uneven. <laughs> um, which means that then when I uh, turned the heel and did the heel, like the, the rest of the heel bit, it all came out a little bit different. And I think you can tell that by looking at this stripe of pink in between, where you can tell that it's a different thickness because I, I kind of took different steps at different times. And then the, uh, the second sock is also looser on the foot which could be because on the first sock I knit with a long needle using magic loop and then on the second sock I had to steal that cable for something else so I switched to just using the tiny tiny circulars to do this the foot until I got to the toe um, and I think that changed my tension as well now that it's not a huge difference and it's not crazy and it certainly it doesn't really bother me I've still enjoyed wearing these socks a lot but I just think it's interesting and it's probably a lesson to me to not put a project down for a million years before picking <laughs> up the other sock uh, maybe that's how second sock syndrome will get me <laughs> but anyway so I'm very happy for that to have been done so I had to figure out what to make then after finishing this top and my socks. And of course, with baby girl coming sometime at the end of the year, uh, I'm very much turning my mind towards that. So I started knitting a baby blanket and I, I went on a bit of, of an adventure with my baby blanket. Let me get the yarn out so I don't crinkle. So you might remember in my last podcast where I was talking about knitting I mentioned that I had gotten two bowls of um, some yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills uh, what's this one called? Dolce I think the bamboo and wool combo and I was very interested to try this one in a baby blanket because I liked the bamboo for a little bit of coolness a bit of heat regulation um, but I liked combining it with the wool to make the bamboo a little bit more stable. So the idea I came up with was a bit of a sampler blanket. Do you know the ones I'm talking about where people have... Um, it's kind of leaning into the, the texture trend, which is really big at the moment. Um, so you know how there's those petite knit patterns and it seems like every design is coming out with a similar thing where it's stripes of a particular stitch pattern. Uh, and overall it's just a very textured look. I thought it could be fun to do that in a blanket and that's certainly not, I'm not the first person to have thought of that, there are lots of good ones around um, and in fact I saw a free version which I was very tempted to knit but I ended up thinking that I wanted to design my own just for a bit of fun. Um, so here's the little sample I ended up knitting up I, first of all, absolutely love this fibre, particularly after blocking. I don't know if you can tell, but it has the most beautiful drape and it is just so silky and soft. Uh, I just, I couldn't be more into it, particularly for a blanket. But basically I cast on multiples of 30 and then I did you know, a bit of garter stitch and a garter panel. Actually, I think I started down here. Um, and then I just tried different stitch patterns to see how I liked it. And the main thing for me was that I, I saw that in a lot of patterns, there's kind of some garter stitch throughout, like across the project to split up the different sections. And I tried that here and I really didn't like how it just disappeared into the pattern that I had above it. There wasn't kind of a clear separation. So then I tried here and the one above it, I tried to do 
um, some stockinette, just a row or two of stockinette, and then the four stitches, and then a couple rows of plain stockinette before starting the next pattern. And for me, that tickles my brain a lot less for some reason. Um, that is probably my favorite way to do it. And the only other thing I'll note is that I thought as well at the sides that the pattern was just kind of disappearing into the garter border. So at the top, you might be able to see that I attempted to do um, one stockinette stitch, just one, two stockinette stitches. Um, just next to the garter border to break it up, but that really didn't work. I think just because um, it, maybe it's the slipperiness of the yarn, but it just kind of looked very messy and got pulled into the, the texture of the pattern next to it. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, but anyway, so that's why I had gotten to with that, and I was just about to um, do the math to um, multiply it out and start doing the pattern. And then Michael threw a wonderful spanner into the works with my birthday present, um, which he got from Skane Sisters uh, down in Sydney, uh, who he had gotten my birthday present last year from as well, which was the yarn for the mystery knit um, from Stephen West. And this time, because he knew I wasn't doing I wasn't going to do the knit along this time. So this time he got me a bunch of Bellissimo 4, which is this beautiful, um, I think it's a merino wool, and it's in fingering weight in colours that could be used to make a blanket. I think it was actually sold as a blanket kit. So let me show you the colours. I'm using a couple in different projects, so it's a little bit messy, but these are the colours. Um, that he selected for the blanket. So it's kind of starting off at a vibrant pink through to some pastels to a neutral white and then through to purples. Um, and yeah, this was at a point where I was just about to make my blanket and then I got this beautiful, beautiful yarn to be used for a blanket. And I thought to myself, oh no, which one am I gonna do? because obviously I immediately wanted to play with my birthday present. <laughs> um, and it did come with a pattern. I think it was, I think maybe this is one that they just came up with themselves because it's got their logo on it, but it's just a, a garter blanket. So each, it looks like you would just use every ball in totality um, for a stripe to make a big rectangle and that would be beautiful it does look beautiful and if you're looking for a super mindless knit I think that sounds great um, but I was tossing between using this yarn to make a sampler blanket since I'd had that in mind or using it to do one of those kind of chevron style blankets uh, which I also really like the look of particularly with the different colors which is what I ended up doing. So I ended up excluding the super bright pink because I thought it just didn't quite mesh well with the other colors. So this I put aside and I'm using to make another little hat, um, which is, I'll put the name up on screen, but it's the same one that I just finished making for a friend's baby shower. I am making for my baby girl. And this is one of those yarns that just makes your knitting look so neat. You know how some, this is what got me into expensive yarns, but there are some yarns that you look at and you knit with, and no matter how inconsistent your tension is or anything, the yarn just seems to kind of plump up and forgive your mistakes. Uh, and this is one of those. So I don't know, I swear it looks like my stock in it is the neatest it's ever been. Uh, so I'm loving that. And I'm just kind of knitting away on the little hat as a, this is my purse project. But so I decided to use the rest of the colors to do um, the kind of chevron baby blanket. So I'll pop the pattern up on screen. 
it's one that's been in my favorites for a really long time and the pattern itself is just a straight stockinette pattern so from the look of the photos it kind of curls at the bottoms and possibly also at the sides um, because it's stockinette and even with the chevron pattern it's still liable to curl um, and for me I don't know about you guys but I really don't like it when stockinette curls so I decided to modify the pattern in a couple ways so um, the pattern called for a certain number of stitches which was different to the number of stitches recommended in the pattern I got with the yarn but you could increase by a multiple of 25 or something so I just increased by that multiple until I got a number which was similar to the one recommended in that pattern and I figured if I got the same number of stitches across and used most of the yarn down it would be about the same dimensions that they recommend in their pattern and therefore be a, a good size for a baby blanket um, so I ended up with 169 stitches which I think is correct um, the other mod modification I did is I modified the pattern so that the first stripe is in garter stitch and I've done 10 garter bumps for each stripe that's what I think I'll stick with so the only way the only thing I did to modify it was instead of purling on the back side and purling through the yarn overs um, on the wrong side sorry um, instead of uh, purling on the back and purling through the yarn overs I just knit and then knit through the back loop when I came to a yarn over and that gave me this pattern at the bottom and then once I got there I had a decision to make in terms of what I would do with the sides and if I was that concerned about it rolling on the sides as well and so what you'll see I've done maybe <laughs> sorry the lighting's a little bit bad but what I've done is I've knit in that same garter pattern for the chevrons on the ends so I think that'll be cute so it'll be kind of a garter border the whole way around because I'll finish on a stripe that is also garter and um, yeah then it'll be stuck in it in the middle transitioning through each of those colors and I hope it'll be really cute I'm very excited this is the one um, that I'm currently just so excited to pick up and knit on which is interesting because it's not the most complex project but I think at the moment that is just exactly what my poor little brain needs <laughs> just something a bit straightforward because I tell you what I am flat out keeping up with completely normal things right now <laughs> I am learning to be a lot more flexible and a lot more forgiving of little errors so actually on that note <laughs> I, I made a mistake in um, the first the first stripe so you'll see um, here it calls for a kind of a central decrease um, I think that's what they no they call it a metered decrease in the pattern which looks like this and has this beautiful kind of um, it, it looks like a roll of stock in it down the middle and it looks so neat and beautiful and when I was doing the garter modification I thought maybe that it looked like where am I it looked like this because it was garter instead of um, a stockinette stitch and maybe that's um, why it just looked a bit messy but no <laughs> After spending all day knitting this stripe, I did one row in the stockinette and realized immediately I'd been doing it wrong. So I think you might be able to see in the first row, it just doesn't look quite right. And that's because um, for the metered decrease, you are supposed to slip two stitches as if to knit together, uh, leave them on your other needle, knit one stitch, and then pass the knitted uh, the, the two slip stitches over the knitted stitch uh, and what I have done for all of that stripe <laughs> is I had just 
slipped two stitches purlwise instead of slipping them together as if to knit together which means that you could see kind of two stitches slanted instead of that one really neat um, line of stitches. So that was a huge uh, bummer to find out, but you know what? It's just, it is what it is. I said it to Michael and I was like, oh gosh, I've made this mistake. Um, do you think I should go back and fix it up? You know, it's a whole day of knitting gone and it's so tough to find knitting time at the moment. And Michael goes, oh, what's, what are you knitting? And I said, it's a blanket for baby girl. And he goes, I don't think she'll mind. <laughs> and then I realized, of course, that no, she won't mind, or I hope she won't. Um, but in terms of keeping the symmetry, I'm tempted to just repeat the error when I get to the end garter stripe and maybe try and make it look like an intentional mistake. What do you guys reckon? Or I could try doing it the correct way because it'll still look different to the actual correct um, meted thing here because it'll be in garter still. So it will be broken up a little bit, but it probably will look different to how I'd mistakenly done it. Anyway, um, let me know if you guys have a view on that. But yeah, this is the project I'm just loving at the moment because it's just crazy to think that it will eventually be with my baby girl um which is yeah a bit wild to think about uh so that's it for my knitting at the moment how long have i prattled on for oh gosh i've been going for a while <laughs> um i hope you've enjoyed hearing about my current projects uh, i'm interested to hear what you're knitting on and otherwise, as a bit of an update, yeah, as I mentioned, um, we went to Hamilton Island last week. It feels like it was already five years ago. <laughs> Isn't it funny how quickly you forget that you were on holiday? Uh, we just went for four days, five days, maybe, um, because I wanted to save my annual leave for the end of the year. Um, so... Yeah, it wasn't a long trip, but we got so lucky on the weather. It was just beautiful the whole time. There was maybe uh, one half day where it was overcast, which is totally fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, we did a glass bottom boat tour. Um, we went for a barbecue dinner cruise where they kind of take you out, feed you a nice dinner and you anchor in this secluded area and enjoy the sunset, uh, which was really, really nice. And otherwise, we pretty much just did nothing. I was exhausted when we got there. I, didn't, I don't think I realized how tired I was until I stopped for a minute. Um, and so there was a full afternoon where I just slept the whole afternoon, <laughs> which was great, actually. I felt so refreshed. Um, and then, yeah, we just spent some time next to the pool, which was amazing. They have really nice pools there. And... We just each brought a book and sat and enjoyed the weather and the pool and the atmosphere and the fact that we weren't at work. <laughs> and we had a mocktail, which was nice, just the one, because somehow mocktails are just as expensive as cocktails, uh, even without the alcohol, which is a little bit wild. Um, so yeah, we had one of those. And then I realized that a glass of pineapple juice was half the cost <laughs> and probably most of the ingredients <laughs> of the mocktails um, or of some mocktails anyway. So yeah, that was a really nice time. But yeah, so what's going on in the rest of my life? I, oh, I'm so excited because I found out today that I actually had more annual leave than I thought I did. So I'd counted on taking four days of annual leave before going on my parental leave. Uh, and as it turns out, I had 10 days. So I've got an extra six days to play with. And the extra six days just feels so luxurious. Oh, it, it really takes the pressure off to kind of get through the to-do list to have everything done because I'll have a little bit of extra breathing room to get everything ready if we haven't got there yet because 
yeah, gosh, it is coming up quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, otherwise we've just been getting the house ready as far as we can for our new guest of honour. Uh, but there's a lot to do. So we are just taking it in bits and pieces and hoping for the best. <laughs> and I'm hoping that you guys won't mind if this podcast is just something I do when I can. Um, I've learned that a very strict schedule is probably not what I'm going to be able to keep up with. So I hope that still putting out a video when I can will be better than not doing it at all. I like to tell myself um, all the time that Doing something imperfectly is better than not doing anything. So that's about it from me. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try this modification um, on the sides of your sweaters because it's super fun. Um, yeah, so if you liked the video, it would be wonderful if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would be so grateful if you would consider subscribing uh, so that we can hang out in future videos. So thanks guys, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.